talking to Monica Jensen and how she used her differentiator to earn a spot on the red carpet. Today's episode is brought to you by My Go Site, where you can build funnels and website all from one location. Easy to use, drag and drop builder, build your first funnel today. Fully customized checkout experience, 14 day free trial, no credit card needed. Welcome back everybody to today's episode of Clicks and Bricks. Today we have Monica, she's an artist, an actress, all over the board, there's all kinds of fun stuff. Monica, how are you doing today? Wonderful, thank you. Thanks for having Can you me. Tell, th thank you for joining us. This is, uh, you've obviously got a great career behind you and a, and a, and a brightful, bright future in front of you. Can you tell us a little bit about you and your past and how you got into the art world? Well, um, so I have a degree in art and a degree in design. And um, originally, I didn't want to be a starving artist, so I, you know, um, focused on design for um, oil and gas companies and um, did major company uh, interior design and that type of thing. And designed my own house, and then got that featured in a magazine, so that was fun. There you go. Um, but um, so with the art, I've always been doing it and, um, you know, I really honed in on it and focused it on 100% um, just after 2008 uh, when the crash happened. You know, right. things happen and you just got to like recreate yourself. So, um, so after that, it was um, because I focused on it, I, I, you know, it just exploded from there. So it was, it was fun. Right. So you're in corporate America doing corporate art for oil companies. That had to have been a blast. So much fun. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I think I'm being a little facetious there. <laughs> um, so, but then 2008, the, the housing crash happens, right? Yeah. And the economy's down. Lots of people losing their jobs, just like they did in 2000 right. with the dot-com bubble. And now you're going to go out, and instead of being a designer, you're going to go all in on your artwork. And not just... Not just your artwork, but you've you've created a whole new style of artwork, correct? Correct. Yeah. Um, so it's called stereographic dimension, and um, it <laughs> takes over a year to dry. So um, you have to be patient. It's you know each piece is you know your baby, <laughs> kind of you're growing it. <laughs> um, so um, just because it there it's so textured, it looks like whipping cream on canvas, and because it is oil. Um, so, and you don't want to cure it too fast, so then it'll crack. So you want to make sure that, um, you know, I think after about six months, you could hang it up on your wall, um, and right. let it just naturally dry, but <laughs> you don't want to take that risk, right? Yeah, well, unless you like color <laughs> <laughs> on your floor, maybe. So fantastic. So design a new style of artwork, really push that through and so that's 2008, and then just a couple of years goes by, and you've got some really high-end hitters, you know, that you're hanging out with and purchasing your artwork and stuff like that. Yeah, so yeah. can you tell us a little bit about, you know, obviously the the crowd that you run with, you know, is the highest level of perfection in everything that they do. Mm -hmm. Do you have any tips or tricks in, you know, staying ahead of the curve? You know, what do you do to stay at the top, you know, the tip top of your game is, you know, your in an industry which is known for starving artists and obviously you're not starving so you know how do you differentiate yourself other than you've designed your own you, know, you came up with your own techniques but how do you in just the business world differentiate yourself and then get to that high level of, of uh, expectations well um well being the exclusive artist at the oscars was um a huge turning point for me um you know I got to meet all the celebrities and make contacts and they got to see my art um, in person and um, that was a, a huge start and then from there um, you know keeping in touch with them and uh, then you know being invited to you know Oscar parties and and the Grammys and that type of thing um, it you, you know you have to keep up it's I mean it's a lot of work <laughs> don't get me wrong right um, but you know social media and um, you know, keeping appearances and that type of thing. Um, I also am constantly going to either, you know, uh, supercar reveals, that type of thing, because that's the clientele that buys my work. So, right. So staying present in their 
You have to ecosystem. stay present, right? You don't want to be forgotten. Right. <laughs> no, because they're not going to buy from you if you're not top of mind, right? That's so, right. so being present is huge, and being present around the people that you want to sell your products to. Now, you got exclusive artists at the Oscars. Um, because it's so textured, it has to be created like an egg and, um, you know, a lot of care and detail is put into transport and that type of thing. So um, you can't just, you know, it's, you can't just roll it up like most artists do and, you know, right. UPS it. <laughs> so to get, to get something like that, and I would consider that like at a marketing expense, right? You're, you're trying to get in front of your ideal buyer and there's no better way, I don't think, than to do what you did. I'm assuming there's a pretty lengthy process and an investment that you have to make, right? This is, you had to pay for the shipping of the products and yeah. the application process and flying, you probably fly yourself out there to talk to them and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. And now, then um, doing uh, social media and that type of thing, um, I'm getting on the news um, in my local area as well. Um, that type of thing was, you know, I, I, you just got to like roll with it. <laughs> right. And, so you had to show the Oscars that you could bring value to them as well, which has got to be kind of mind boggling. Like what can I bring to the Oscars? Right. How can I create value for that? And that's got to be a pretty big mindset change. And you said that you do that through vision boards. Yeah. Right. Well, vision you, boards help me. Um, you know, right. I, <laughs> I always like to have a huge bucket list and I add a lot of um, more things than every year, but I want to make sure that I, you know, cross off at least three. <laughs> so, you know, it's never ending, but it, you know, it's always being accomplished. Right. Yeah. So you want a th three bucket items per year. I think that's a great goal, right? And that can be they can, anything they don't from... don't have to be huge. Right. Like I they even have be... Catch a Unicorn on my list and that doesn't mean that I won't catch one. <laughs> Yeah, but if you see one, you're going to try, I right? So that can even be, um, you know, for a business owner, that can be something like, you know, floor seats at a basketball game. Um, you know, really just stuff to put you in the mindset of being, doing what, what champions do, mm -hmm. right? And I think those kinds of things help business owners really understand who they are, what their positions are, who they're serving, right? And, and how to get there, right? Because if you can't picture yourself there, you probably won't get there. Well, small business, small steps is um, what right. I always advise. And, you know, um, if you do have, if you do set those goals, they don't have to be big goals. I mean, they can be little things like, oh, you wanted to completely clean your office so you're organized. That could be <laughs> like a great one, right? Like, right. They don't have to be on, you know, you, you, like on. Um, they don't have to be reach. Oscars. You can definitely right. reach them. But, you know, yes. you can have some fun ones on there, like jump out of a plane and, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think that if you don't do those kinds of things, and I don't do vision boards, but I do a lot of visualization because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a horrible drawer and I not, you know, I, I failed art class in that second grade. So, um, you know, collages aren't my jam either. But, um, you know, I do a lot of visualization and things like that. And I find that if I can't visualize where I'm going to be, then I'm probably not going to get there. So take that time. And it's, it's important work to take the time and really think about what you want and, how, and, and then how you're going to get there, right? And I think more so what you want is more important than how you're going to get there. If you know what you want, you'll find a way to get there. Is, is well, because there's a lot of different paths to get to the same point, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So fantastic. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Um, so we've got, you were on, we've got your artwork, which is phenomenal stuff. You've been on a couple of TV shows. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Because that's not that's not like you you know you apply for a job and you get that job and you work there for twenty years and they just keep moving you to the next job. It's every single time. It's you know almost like creating a brand new business every time you go onto a new TV show, right? Like, there's a lot to learn about culture and everything. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience that you had? Um, well, the say yes to the dress was a lot of fun to do. I mean, it, for anybody that doesn't know what it is, uh, <laughs> it's um, Kleinfeld's um, wedding um, facility in, in New York. And, it, uh, you know, all the girls just want to get dresses there. So, <laughs> um, so that was fun. 
And, um, and then I've also been on um, several um, shows um, like Sex, Lies and Murder. I've been the villain and um, the victims uh, <laughs> um, as main characters. So that was fun. Right. It's got to be interesting. A lot, a lot of fun to do those kinds of things. And then do you have, if you get those kinds of opportunities, do you try to parlay those into new opportunities? Or is it kind of just like, hey, this Yes to the Dress is a fun thing to do but it's just going to be over here on the side or is that a catalyst to help you do other parts of your business? I, I love all creative things. So, um, yeah. the next thing I want to do is my own reality show. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. Well, that should be a lot of fun. I know. Do you have the premise yet? Sorry? Do you have the premise done yet or are no. you still developing? No, I, I mean, um, I, you know, I've been doing, uh, you know, just, live TikToks and stuff and when I'm in my right. car I get lots of hits. <laughs> <laughs> but Fantastic. I mean, yeah. I have a pretty fun life, um, I think. So I mean I I'm living the dream. I think that most people um would think would be awesome. And, you know, I'm I think it would be really fun to have you know a reality show. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Being the life of and I, MJ. <laughs> and I think if people were to just look at you and not not know you at all, they'd make a whole bunch of assumptions that, oh, it's easy for her because she's pretty and she had this great start. But you don't have an extravagant beginning. You come from pretty humble background, correct? That is correct. Um, my parents immigrated um, from a communist country. And, um, you know, they left everything and didn't even tell their family because, you know, um, you know, in those days you didn't do that because then your family would, would be in trouble too so they just right. left in the middle of the night and like they didn't have any money or anything and just came to Canada to uh, give me and my sister an opportunity to you know explore what we wanted to and you know I'm pretty lucky about that right and so you are first generation Canadian yep. uh, your parents moved to Canada no money at all no. and you're born two weeks later Yep. That, that's correct. <laughs> yes. So, um, and your parents at that time don't even speak English, correct? Uh, yeah. Well, no, not really. Or, or, or broken English, right? Broken so English, they're yeah. a new country, barely speak English, yeah, a newborn, and, and, and a two-year-old. Like, you know, in those days, I mean, it wasn't like when people immigrate now, uh, where, you know, you're handed over a lot of things like a job or, um, you know, um, a place to live and that type of thing. I mean, right. they, they were given anything. They had to, my dad was doing like three jobs. My mom was doing two jobs and plus raising kids and, you know. Right. So <laughs> don't just think that the people that make it to success, that it was easy for them. Right. I think that's a, a misconception that a lot of business, a lot of people that aren't in business have, right? Oh, they got lucky. And, and don't get me wrong, luck plays a huge factor, but making your own luck, I think, is more important than just de depending on luck. Would, you, would right. you agree with that, Monica? Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, um, if, if you fail, you're by yourself. But if you succeed, everyone, you know, helped you out on the way, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You definitely fail alone. Everybody crickets whenever you're failing. Yeah. Um, but whenever you're starting to get successful, it's, <laughs> you know, everybody's coming around. So Yeah, but, you know, uh, nobody wants to take the risk. So, uh, you know, that if you don't take a risk, you're not going to, you know, have the opportunities that the people that are successful do. Right. Because, I mean, it, it does take a little bit of guts and, you know, to follow your dreams and, you know, get out of the niche of, you know, not having a steady income and, you know, having to work your own hours and, you know, not getting a nine to five job. Right. And then not being afraid to do it your way. Right. Because I think <laughs> what, you know, makes your painting so unique today and gets you to that level is that you didn't think that artwork was one dimensional. You really brought it three dimensional. And not just artwork, because we have sculpting and stuff like that, but we're talking about flat canvas paintings with not a little bit of texture, but extreme texture in them, correct? Right. Yeah, so that's pretty wild, and I'm positive you probably had at least one person say, 
Yeah, that's nice, but how are you going to make a living with it? Oh, yeah, everybody. <laughs> everybody, right? And then the next thing you know, you're at the, you know, you know, elbow to elbow with uh, Elton John and a lot of a lot of great celebrities, right, at the Oscars. So that's that's phenomenal having that kind of exposure. Can you tell us a little bit about because you you literally cr- you invented a, a new way to do painting, right? And I'm sure it's been copied a couple of times by by other people, like all great work is. Can you tell us a little bit about your mindset when, you know, you're on this path and you can see the vision, but nobody else can, right? How do you, how do you keep going down the path when everybody else is like, you're crazy, that's not going to work? <laughs> uh, it, you know, some days it's hard to wake up. I, you know, honestly, it is, um, you know, if, if uh, you're having a bad week, but, um, you know, staying positive and um, looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, I'm going to do this. And, you know, and visualizing that you've already completed it, I think is a big key. Absolutely. I tell, um, so I teach kids, I teach a, a lot of people how to box. Uh, but my kids, I teach them, you know, every week I say, hey, pick something to do this week. Say you're going to do it and then immediately do it. Get used to doing what you're when you say you're going to do something, get used to just doing it immediately, right? Get out of this, hey, I'm going to do this someday mindset. And, and some things you have to have that for, you know, giant goals that take a long time to do. But, you know, if you just literally, you can tell yourself anything, I'm going to do five jumping jacks and then do them right away. Don't, don't give yourself any time to think about it at all and get yourself in the habit of just, when you say you're going to do something, by God darn it, you're going to do it. And you're going to do it almost immediately, right? Well, and so, that's the hardest thing, right? Following through. So, um, you know, it's just like, (laughs) you know, I always want to work out before, like, before I start my work day. And, you know, sometimes you just want to be lazy in bed. But if you get out and do it, then, you know, it's done. You feel exhilarated and you can focus more on, you know, you've accomplished something already. So Right. Yes, absolutely. That's why I tell the kids. I also say make your bed because you first thing in the morning you wake up, you can you can control that. Right. So get the habit of being in things that you can control and understand there's things in life that you can't control, but the things that you can control, you're going to do them and you're going to do them to the best of your ability, right? Even if it's, you know, I've got kids that are all across the board. Um, some of them, you know, don't have the physical capability to do it properly, but they try, right? They do their best. And I think that's really what's mostly important other than doing it your way, right? Being authentic and being yourself, which is, what you've done and drove it home with your artwork, and I appreciate that. Anytime that somebody says, hey, this is the normal way to do it, throw that away. I'm going to do this other thing, I think is something that the world needs more of, and people are confident enough to stand up and say, no, this is the way I do it. That's okay, right? It doesn't have to be this cookie-cutter thing that everybody else is doing. Exactly. Exactly. Right? I think that's and, you know, really, really important. If everyone did the same thing, that life would be boring, right? <laughs> Absolutely. It'd be horribly boring, right? If the whole world is nothing but a bunch of me's, I mean, <laughs> it would be pretty cool, but it would get boring really quickly, right? And, um, Absolutely. It would not, yeah. <laughs> so, fantastic. Uh, on Clicks and Bricks, we like to talk about business and technology. Yeah. We love your artwork. We love how you got to where, you, where you're at in your industry today. Can you tell us a little bit about what you think technology is going to do? And we talked a little bit about this, so don't go into what we talked about prior. Um but what technology is going to do for your industry, and I think we could talk about it's what it's going to do for the art industry or the you know acting industry, entertainment industry as a whole, if, if that's where you want to take it. Well, um, how is technology going to affect everything? Well, I mean, um, like I said, I am now taking cryptocurrency for payments, and um, you know, like <laughs> most people still aren't even into the cryptocurrency thing, but but I love it. <laughs> I think it's great. Yeah, and I'm so inundated with cryptocurrency that I just think everybody knows it because I, you know, study three or four hours a day on cryptocurrency because I do believe that it's, you know, part of a big part of our future. And what you're saying now is that in the crypto world, you can trade your asset for cryptocurrency. It may not be a taxable event at that point, right? You get to choose when you're going to pay the taxes, when you convert that cryptocurrency into right. US dollar. Yeah. Right. When Which it's is more, when it's more beneficial for you. Right. So right. Um, that gives um, the individual more power as well. Um, on that yeah, aspect. So and, as an artist, I think there's probably more 
um, benefits in accepting cryptocurrency than other kinds of currency. One, the trust in transaction overseas is much easier to do. You have way lower transaction fees on most blockchains at least. Mm -hmm. um, right? You have real-time confirmation or close to real-time confirmation. True. You can do that trade really, really quickly. And then the, the, the transaction is public knowledge, right? Everybody knows that the, the coins went from this wallet to this wallet. So it's very easy to track back, um, not necessarily the who's, but the wallet, to, the address to address. So I think um, accepting cryptocurrency is huge. Was that a hard thing to implement? In your, uh, I'm assuming that's through your website that you're taking cryptocurrency? Um, or is that commission work? Um, no. Um, it, well, it wouldn't be through the website. You just need to contact me, email, if okay. you were interested in one. And it would just be like a one-on-one -on -one transaction. Gotcha. Can I buy your artwork today off a shelf anywhere at, a, at a, um, any galleries, or is it 100% oh, commission? I do have some in galleries, um, New York and L.A., and in um, still some in Europe. Um, but, um, you know, if you contact me directly, it's so I find it's always <laughs> better to right. contact the, the artist. In, and, uh, you know, I have a lot of pieces in my home that, um, so it's, I have... It, my house is kind of like my gallery. So. Right. Okay. So, and that's Monica Jensen Productions.com, where you can right. call her. The phone number is 403 604 1313. And then you can commission artwork or see, maybe get a, a catalog of what she has available. Yeah. If you're in the if you're in the industry or looking to buy some artwork, uh, which is a great way to, you know, uh, they're good. At, art's a good investment, and it's a good place to of long-term storage of your capital, right? So if you have extra capital, putting in an artwork is a phenomenal way to hold that that value Absolutely. over long periods of time, <laughs> right? Um, and even transact that value as well. So thank you for everything that you're doing. I think you're uh, you know, really coming up with a new style of art is, is phenomenal. I do have one question on the, on the tech behind your art because it is that, you know, and you call it, can you repeat the name for me again? It's stereo graphic dimension. Stereo graphic dimension. So, does that have any kind of noise canceling ability as well? Noise because it is <laughs> like would that be a good piece for or like sound studios and things like that because it does have that texture and it, it's hard to bounce the audio off of. Have you had anybody look at it for those kinds of reasons? Um, that's interesting. Um, no, I haven't. Um, <laughs> um, but I wonder if it would be. Um, a good sound. I think it would be a good because it's similar to the sound, you know, the sound cushions on the wall with that deep texture. I don't know. Maybe it would be fun to, to do some kind of deep decibel exercise uh, to see if that's good. And that might be a whole new line of business for you Maybe. to sell to the, the high end uh, production companies that have sound studios because, you know, this black and white squares all over get pretty boring to look at. That's uh, true. That's true. <laughs> so fantastic. Thank you for your time today. Do you have anything to leave the guests before we go? Um, just contact me. All of my um, pieces are original pieces, um, so there are no prints out there. So if you see a print, it's fake. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. And if you've never bought art before, really do some research on the difference between original versus prints uh, versus canvas, right? Because it's it's a wild difference, and the value in a one-time piece or an original piece is wildly different than a print or anything like that. So That's right. um, it, it, they hold their value so much more and the potential for them to go, um, I'm going to use a cryptocurrency term, parabolic yes. in their value is very real, right? These yeah. art, This artwork can go for much more than what you paid for it originally. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah. Fantastic. So thank you for your time today. Thanks for having That's me. <laughs> thank you. So that's all we have for the day. The, today's show, folks. Again, my name is Ken. This is Clicks and Bricks. Get to work.